It's been a hot summer. And not only has it been a hot summer, but throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, there have been fires and floods and all kinds of climate-related weather disasters. It's clear that climate change is happening around the globe. And while before we knew that, when we talked about polar ice melting, it seemed far away. But now it's in our backyard, it's in our neighborhood, it's in our areas. We're living with the heat and humidity, as well as weather-related disasters. So today I want to talk about spirituality and climate change. What role does spirituality have for us in terms of climate change? How can spirituality help give us a vision for moving forward in the face of a changing climate? So right now I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. People in the global north are really experiencing what Secretary, the Secretary General of the UN has called a climate crisis. But people in the global south have been living with the climate crisis for some time. Already throughout parts of the global south, land is becoming increasingly more desert, Water is drying up, people can't farm, people can't get food, they don't have water to drink. And there are island nations that are losing their land mass as seas are rising. All of this has been happening in the south, but this summer it really hit home in the north. You know, when we look at what governments are doing and what corporations are doing, we can get really frustrated. There were agreements made in the Paris Accords, but most governments aren't really working aggressively towards them. And corporations, while some have progressive policies, many are maintaining business as usual for the sake of profits. And it's those profits that are causing the world to go through these, these real changes. And we need to change our economies, we need to change government policies. And we need to change the way we're living. Change is very hard for us. And I think one of the ways that we find the energy for change is through our spirituality, that inner life, that inner energy that's part of us. And I want to talk about three ways that are really important in terms of spirituality for change to happen in the face of the climate crisis. The first is in terms of hope. I've talked about this in other videos, but key to spirituality and spiritual practice is hope. Hope isn't denying realities around us. Hope recognizes what's happening, but in the midst of dire circumstances, it says there are possibilities. There are ways to be resilient or thrive. Hope opens us to those possibilities mentally, psychologically, at, at a heart level, at a spirit level. Hope causes us to move forward rather than give up. And right now, giving up isn't an answer for us. We need to move forward to find solutions for our planet and for future generations, because we're not gonna be able to air condition our way out of this climate crisis. Secondly, key to spirituality is compassion. Now, it's said different ways in different traditions. If you're Christian, you know the words of Jesus, to love one another. If you're Muslim, you know the teachings of charity and how keenly they're tied, how tightly they're tied to the, to the basic faith in Islam. And if you're Buddhist, well, there's a lot about compassion, compassion for self and compassion for all sentient beings. That's all important in the face of climate change. Our spiritual lives should bring us to a place where we recognize that we are a global community, that we need to have compassion for the suffering of others, that we need to be charitable and loving and find ways to support life in all of its forms. So that compassion is very much tied to our spiritual lives. And third, is to really understand that spirituality is not escapism. Spirituality is not about finding my own private peace, my own comfort zone, when all the world is falling apart around me. No, spirituality is indeed about finding peace. It's about being grounded and having roots and experiencing that deep inner peace, but that inner peace is for a purpose. 
that purpose is to bring change in my life and and in so doing bring change into the world that there's an energy that comes for us from our spiritual practice that yes makes us better people but also that energy flows out of us to bring goodness into the world and that's really important for us as we move forward in this climate crisis because moving forward is exactly what we need to do. So what is it that we can do? I think there are two levels that we need to work out. The first level is that of the policy level. We need to be advocates for better policy in each of our countries. We need to let all government officials, local officials, state and provincial level officials, federal officials know that climate change is an issue for us and that we expect action. The same is true in terms of messaging to corporations, that, that climate change and, and responsible po corporate policies around the climate are critical for moving forward. Those are things we can all do. That's about letter writing and postcards and phone calls. We can do that. But then there are the things that we can do in our own personal lives, and that's gonna be different for each of us. You know, in, in our own, my own household, I'm fortunate enough that, that we own a home and that has a fairly good size uh, yard to it. And so over the years, we've planted about a dozen trees. We have two beehives to try to ma help maintain bee populations. We have planted wildflowers to help support insects as well as butterflies. We have a, a, a bat house you know, to provide a shelter for bats because bat habitat is, is diminishing. So we do very concrete things to help support the environment. Inside the house, we've really been careful to look at how we can cut energy usage in our home. So all of those things come into play for us. The important thing is that we act, that we remember that we have the ability to help bring change into the world. We do it through advocacy and we do it through our own action. And I think lest we feel overwhelmed, we remember that people throughout time have faced overwhelming circumstances. Perhaps one of the most critical overwhelming circumstances happened in World War II. And some of those circumstances are recorded in the diary of Anne Frank. While she was hiding from the Nazis, she wrote something that I think is very inspiring for us to consider today, and I want to read that to you. Anne wrote, How lovely to think that no one need to wait a moment. We can start now. We can start slowly changing the world. How lovely that everyone, great and small, can make their contribution toward introducing justice straight away. And you can always, always give something. I want to rephrase that to you can always, always do something. We can start. We can start today doing things rooted in that spiritual energy that is the basis of our life to preserve the life of the planet, to preserve the life of future generations. We do that through acting, through advocacy, through making changes ourselves. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others. Leave me some comments on ideas of things you're doing in your world to help preserve the environment. And know that I really appreciate the time you take to be with me on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.